Okay, so I'm here with Perspective Philosophy. We've obviously had our share of disagreements over the years. Um, Perspective said he wants to kind of both do an opening statement. The topic's going to be name the trait and the law of identity. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, you go ahead and make your statement. You offered that I can make one, too. I don't really have that much to say. But, yeah, you go ahead, then I'll make mine, then we'll just do back and forth. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So... I guess the first thing I'd like to say is, you know, I, I am a vegan. Um, I, is that? No, I'll just quickly open that. Um, I am a vegan. Um, I do appreciate the purpose of Name the Trait and its, its function, its attempt to try and um, show the contradictions, logical contradictions in non-vegans' positions when they try and affirm that um, a certain trait is a justifiable reason to, you know, cause animal suffering. And uh, I respect the, 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 at least the, the intention behind the argument. And um, more than that as well, I would like to say that uh, the problems I have with it, I do believe can be resolved. So as I've been looking into it, I do believe that they can be resolved. So the problems that I've seen in the past is essentially, name the trait when it comes up in a debate, I see it as uh, normally when, I, when it's spoken, it's uh, what is true of an animal that if we're true of a human would justify difference in treatment or stabbing them to death or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, essentially you would like to say it justifies. Now that isn't so much the problem, although it will have a problem depending upon the form, how we interpret the formal version of name the trait. So in the formal version of name the trait, if I'm right, I, I hope I've still got the, the newest and up the date most up to date version of name the trait. It says if your uh, this is P one where I have the problem by the way. If your view affirms that a that a given human is trait equalizable to a given non human animal whilst retaining moral value, then your view can only deny the given hu non human animal as having moral value under pain of P and not P. Um, it's similar to the first, but it's not identical. Um, primary the primary difference between them is the term given human and given animal, them, them two terms. These point to particulars uh, or ostensive uses in which I could say that I have to be in direct relation to a particular human or a particular animal. Uh, this is essentially relates to the notions of primal identity or um, individualism or individualistic identity. So this means that traits can be specific and particular to determinate objects. So you could say this human has moral value while well, this human doesn't have moral moral value because of you know having particular identity X whilst the other has particular identity Y. So this means that this has particular relevance to certain metaethics, particular egoism, subjectivism, particularism, and institute and uh, intuitionalism. Intuitionalism are some of the the metaethics I, I can foresee issues arising. An example would be um, an egoist who says that they are the given uh, uh, are the given human and ought to be trait equalized to a given animal. So the reason this has a problem depends upon how we take the concept of trait equalization and what we take to be particular identities, which which involves the concept of the concept of thisness. In other words, um, the ontological individuality of an object, that it is a particular being which can be, which can only be itself. It contains the property, um, not any other object. Um, it is a determinate, discrete object. So if an egoist was to say that they were the object of the, of the human, they were to say that they are the human, uh, and they were to be trade equalized into a pig, um, any particular pig, I don't think it matters too much or any, anything else for that matter. This could cause a problem if the egoist, for example, chose their ego as they would as the trait, because that would mean that their trait, their ego would have to be uh, trait equalized into this pig, which means they would have to become a pig. So would they value themselves if they were a pig? Now, the argument seems to say that they would be in contradiction if they were to value themselves as a pig. Now, I don't think this shows a contradiction unless we were to say that the psychological continuity of the individual is part of their ego. So the idea is that 
unless this individual, if they were suddenly a pig and had all of the human, you know, conscious attributes of being a human and having the same ego and the same thought processes as a human, suddenly became a pig. It's not contradictory to say that they would still value themselves unless um, they were to say that they wouldn't value like themselves if they didn't have these thought processes, the same egoistical understanding of themselves and self-awareness and so on, with the properties that egoists rely upon to have a psychological continuity. If you were to say that they didn't have psychological continuity, though, we would be saying that they became equal, uh, absolutely identical to the, the pig, which means that there was never a pig in the first place. It would be to say that the individual hasn't actually um, hasn't actually transformed. They were the pig or they were both the pig and not the pig at the same time. And this is my issue. So this is why I have divided, I think, the interpretation of name the trait into uh, a, st a strong versus weak name the trait. And I think that is the, 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 the better way to look at it. Because from my understanding of name the trait, it is, uh, it is assumed that if all traits true of one object are equalized to those true of another, that any traits remaining after equalization are possessed by both objects. Now, if those, if those traits that are equalized include notions of primal identity, that would see in, um, you know, like something like, um, you know, uh, an ostensive definition of an apple versus another apple, then we would say that the, there could not be two apples uh, and non-Euclidean geometry could show this between spheres, that two spheres could be identical if they were to obtain all of the same traits. And um, this becomes even more clear if we include things such as space, time, historical um, underpinnings and, and so on. And so the point I'm trying to make is that that would be the strong name, the trait um, interpretation, where we take trait equalization to mean any any trait at all, including primal, including primal um, identity or pri primal uh, features or characteristics. Whilst weak name the trait would instead have to differentiate and say that it would not include primal, primitive or individualistic um, identity, which would mean that there were certain meta ethics which could not be, could that would not, which would implicitly reject P1 such as uh, particular forms of egoism, particularism, intuitionism, and even some forms of subjectivism would be would reject P1, in which case you would have to argue that there was a different meta-ethical case in the first place before the argument would apply. This is what makes it weak because you would need a, um, a, a substantive argument that would say that it, it, it should apply. Um, however, it would continue to function as normal on robust realism and quasi realism and quasi realism or any other theory based on universal generalizations so i hope that explains my position how i think it could be resolved and overall um the the issue with leibniz's law the identity of indiscernibles that if two objects have exactly the same characteristics they would be indiscernible from one another and that p1 argues that if a, if a given human is trait equalizable to a non-given human animal whilst retaining moral <laughs> value, that both the human and the animal must have all of the same traits simultaneously if everything true was equalized. Uh, that would be the strong interpretation. So I hope that clarifies my position. And yeah, um, we can just get into it. Okay, well, I mean, I think I'm just going to forfeit any opening remarks because I just want to understand like what this criticism is supposed to be. So, obviously, the problem you're trying to pick is with P1, right? Yeah. And the problem is with the notion of trait equalization? Yes, just purely trait. Well, the two things that I could say is because it says a given human and a given animal which is which points towards particulars if you had said um humans or animals it would be less extent less um primitive and you'd have um the universal basis in which you would have but then you'd need a an argument that the individual would have to ascribe to that gives humans moral value as in all humans um but i think you wanted to move away from that which is why you changed name the trait in the first place but um i think that you you do lose a lot of the problems with having a given uh, 
uh, as the as the as being able to point to a primitive identity. Uh, and then the second thing would be trade equalization. Um, trade equalization can either be interpreted to be complete, absolute, and total trade equalization between all possible ontological attributes between two beings, or it could be um, limited to those that are not related to primitive identity. Okay, well, I don't, I can't, I mean, not trying to, not trying to offend, but I mean, I can't make sense of any of that. So okay. let me just... I'll try to break it down. I, I, it might be the way I'm wording it as well. So, um, well, so, I'd, I sorry. could ask something. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go I, for I it. just want you to point out where the weirdness is, okay? So, we have one possible world, and then we have another possible world. In mm -hmm. the first possible world, there is a human who's being killed. And mm -hmm. in the last possible world, or in the other possible world, there's an animal who's being killed. And there's a series yeah. of possible worlds in between. So far, do yeah. you see any problem? Um, not until we, yeah, not so far, no. Um, okay. It depends on what, it depends though, because I could foresee a problem if we were to take, um, do you know any, do you well, know a person called Adams, about a person called Adams? Sorry, be before talking about a problem you foresee, can we just, I, what I was going to do was just lay out what trade equalization is talking about and then try to see where you object. So okay. you don't see an objection if so far, when I say, here's a possible world where a human is being killed, here's a possible world where an animal is being killed, and there's possible worlds in between those two. Um, no, no, not so okay. far. Okay. Now, say that the worlds in between are just modifications on that first possible world. So we're just going to alter some propositions in that world to be more <laughs> like the world at the end of the series. So, mm -hmm. for example, in the last uh, world, the being who's getting killed has lower intelligence. So one of the possible worlds in between would be a human with lower intelligence being killed. Do you see a problem yeah. with this? No, no, I don't see a problem. Okay. So that is what trade equalization is. Yeah, um, I, I understand that. Um, I suppose my problem would be, and if I could give a similar example, um let's say someone was to say so, um, sorry, but before you before you give an example i thought there was a problem with trade equalization but it there sounds is, like it, you just it, there said is, there was there is um but the it, it's whether it include it's it's whether all traits are being equalized and whether the objects are so for example if we were to say that there was a series of possible worlds in which um, a human and an animal are being made similar, which demonstrate marginal cases between each uh, until we get to the point of the animal, right? So, like, you know, you've got the one with lower intelligence, maybe diminished uh, self-awareness, and, and then so on like that. Uh, until we reach the point of the animal. Um, the issue would arise if it included a notion of primitive, uh, a primitive identity. So if there was something that was ontologically distinct about world A that could not be transmuted into another world uh, or transmuted in such a way that it could be trade equalized, um, it would implicitly reject P1. Now or that, if it that I can't make any sense of. So, so I, I, just, yeah. I just don't understand. Like, so is the problem supposed to be that there's a contradiction? Is it a logical problem? It's it's a it's a yeah it's a it's a logical problem. Okay, it's a contradiction. It would be incoherent to say that. Um, so like it would it would not logic it could is not there, logically follow. It would be that the sentence structure like if we allow it, it depends on how we define trade equalization. You see, because if we say trade equalization is to move all traits. Sorry, I. I... I just want to try to understand what kind of problem we're talking about before before we go into talking about the problem in detail. When you say incoherent, is that supposed mm -hmm. to mean that there's a contradiction? Yeah, I think there would be a okay. there be a contradiction. Which propositions form the contradiction? The contradiction is in the sentence structure of P one. It's, in, it's incoherent. What is the contradiction though? The contradiction is affirming that you can trade equalize a human and an animal 
in the form of primitive identities? Is it all all true? Was it all? I'll use your terminology. Sorry, that makes it easier. Um, that all traits true of an object could be equalized. That's what forms a contradiction because you I'm have not, to say. I'm not that, asking what leads to the contradiction. I'm asking that is what the contradiction. The con like, so that, you'd say that like a human. Wait, but a, a contradiction. That, I'm I'm looking for something that if I formalize it in a formal language, it's going to be false in all possible worlds. So I want something okay. like P and not P. Okay, that something could be both trait equalized, that something is both trait equalized and not trait equalized simultaneously. Okay, yeah, so the contradiction is that, uh, what, that X can be trait equalized and X can't be trait equalized? The contradiction is that X has been trait equalized and X hasn't been trait equalized. Okay, X has been trait equalized and it's not the case that X has been trait equalized. Yeah. So if we say that we have a series of possible worlds, the first has a human being stabbed, the last has an animal being stabbed, setting up that series, that's all we mean by trade equalization. That is trade equalization. So I, I understand have, that, but it... Sorry, have we set up that series? The the only well, we we haven't went through a particular. What do you mean, like contextually, like right now, well, or do you mean? Yeah, like... I'm because I just set up the series, and you said that you don't see a problem with that so far, right? So I don't see set... I don't see a problem with the notion of trade equalization, d is so long as it excludes certain features of identity, is what okay, I'm trying to express. But, but wait, I'm trying to understand how you're getting to the contradiction that something has been trade equalized and it's not the case that it's been trade equalized. So okay. when we say something has been trade equalized, all I take that to mean is that we can set up a trade equalization for this object and some other object. Like we can say, here's this possible world, here's that possible world, here's the ones in between. If mm -hmm. you, you think we can do that, right? We can set up that series? I think you, I think you can, depending upon the... You, can, you can't set it up with all things true of an object. You can what with is that? most, what is, for example. What do you mean when you say that? So, for example, you couldn't take... Um, you couldn't turn, let's say, if I was to say a given human, let's say me, and I was to say a given pig, any given pig, you could not trade equalize me with all propositions that are true of me or all statements that are true of me could not be trade equalized into that pig. Some could. What is that? Sorry, I, I mean, you can continue if you want, but like, it's, it's just, I'm already lost and I feel like when you mm. continue, it's all going over my head because I'm stuck on something at the start. So, right. I mean, you can choose. Do you, want, do you want to continue or do you want me to try to spell out what I'm not understanding? Try and spell out what you're not understanding and then, and then I'll see if I can clarify. Okay. What I'm not understanding is all I take it to mean to say that we're trade equalizing something or we have trade equalized something is just that we've set up a, po a series of possible worlds where you have the one thing in the first world, the other thing in the last world, and you have a series of worlds in between. Mm -hmm. So when we set that up, when I say, here's a world where a human's being stabbed, here's a world where an animal's being stabbed, and there's worlds in between that get kind of closer to that world, right? It's like, here's one where a low intelligence human is being stabbed. Here's one where a human with cow appendages is being stabbed and, you know, so on and so forth. When we set that up, that is the first part of what you're trying to say as a contradiction, right? That's the first proposition. X has been trade equalized, right? But I don't see how you get to the second part that X hasn't been trade equalized. Okay, so the reason why I'd say that X hasn't been trade equalized is because if we include certain notions of identity, so at one point, let's say we say that, um, okay, because it's a hypothetical, you can you can basically play around. You can have like things that don't exist in reality and understand that. So you could have a human or a cow with the psychological um, continuity of a human, for example. So they can have the uh, they could have always thought of themselves as being themselves. They've always been human, for example, until they were a cow, and they've went through this trade equalization process until they themselves are a cow. Okay. Um, and you could put an egoist in that scenario. You could go, right, well, you are actually metamorphizing into a cow through a series of um, events, world one, world two, world three. You know, you gain a cow's legs, arms, 
and then eventually you're fully a cow, except you have a human mind, right? The problem is Wait, when you try to... The last world has a cow with a human mind? Yeah, I mean... That's uh, not as what we're a, talking a, about. The last no, world is just a cow. That You see, that's the point. Like, that would be... The, what I'm talking about there would be what I would call the weak interpretation of Name the Trait, where you would say that there would be some aspects in which you recognize that could not be trait equalized without what, breaking... When you say can't be trait equalized, I don't understand what you're saying. Like, all we're talking about with trait equalization is here's a world with a human being stabbed, mm -hmm. here's a world with an animal being stabbed, there's worlds in between that are a modification on the first world. Now, when you say that the contradiction is that we have and haven't trade equalized, you're saying that both of those things are true, right? So the first part that we have trade equalized, I agree <laughs> that's true because we say, here's the first world, here's the last world, here's the worlds in between, right? So we agree <laughs> that's true, correct? <laughs> yeah. Now, how do you get to we haven't trade equalized? Where does that come from? So if we were to say like what you said there, that there is simply a cow at the end with all of the attributes of being a cow. It is simply yes. a cow. It was never you. It could yeah. never have been you. It was a separate discrete object. Yeah, of course. It's a separate. Right? My point is saying that if it was a separate discrete object with the history uh, of being a separate discrete object, mm -hmm. that if we were to trade equalize the history of being uh, of having once been you um or if we were to or, sorry if we were to trade equalize the or having always been you it would have never it could not have been both the cow in the past and you in the past yeah at the same time okay so i, I think i'm getting closer to seeing what the confusion is so yeah. the last world is just a cow that's always been a cow it's not a cow yeah. that was me at some point it was, right. it's just in a series of worlds, right? The, when we're talking about me, we're talking about a being in some other possible world. We're not talking about something that exists in the history of the cow in the final world. The last world is just a cow. Okay. So, but if it's a separate discrete object, mm -hmm. then when we say trade equalization, what we're actually doing is comparing discrete. separate possible worlds. Yeah. Yes. Every, and to be with clear, it's, each it's with not- Each own discrete object. Yes. Right. It's not, it's not that- Somehow it's like the same object in, you know, worlds one through 99 and then world 100 is a different, ob it's a different world, it's, sorry, it's a different object in each world. You're talking about something with a different identity. Okay, so let's say like in world 100 it's the cow and in world 99 it's the human. In it's not, world, sorry, it's not. No, it's sorry, not, in world 99 it's the, uh, the it's, cow it's, with the human mind. In, in world 99 it's human prime, 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 prime right? It's not, it's yeah. not the human. Yeah. It's some other yeah, being. Yeah, that's what I, I, that's what I mean. Every world being. Okay. Um, sorry, I, I wasn't clear. That's fine. Um, uh, <laughs> let's say it's like a cow with a human mind, and you're talking to an egoist. World, sorry, so, I, you lost me. World 99 is a cow with a human mind? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you're talking to an egoist, and what they're valuing in this scenario is the fact that that cow has your their human mind. Their human and mind? Like or or like who is that human mind? Like whatever human mind they've described in the scenario. A mind that that is that that's when we say a human mind, we just mean a mind with the same features as a human. We don't mind. We don't mean the same mind as the human in the first world, right? Yeah. Sorry, I was I was describing an egoist who chose themselves as a given human. Sorry, that lost me. An egoist who chose themselves as the given. He well, wait one second. We're gonna we're gonna make things more complicated than we need to if we start talking about when you're the being who's being trade equalized. Let's just talk about when you have like a human who they say they wouldn't stab, right? Mm -hmm. And they have an animal who they say they would stab. Let's just work with that because that's just that's simple and that's what we're normally running the argument on. Yeah, I, I gave I gave egoism. The reason I gave egoism particular merit in this is because it's very particular, and that's like that's very much engaged in this idea of primal identity. But I'm happy to do it with just human. Um, if we if we take the idea of a human mind uh, being in a cow, and that's what they're valuing, and then the human mind is no longer in the cow at uh, world one hundred, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. How are they in contradiction if they valued the human mind in world 99, but then don't value the cow in world 100? There's not, you, you understand, wait, so there's, to answer, there's not necessarily a contradiction, but you understand that name the trait isn't always going to show a contradiction, right? Well, if, if, if their view affirms that it is trait equalizable, I think that's what, that's what you said. N no, it's not, I mean, no, it's not the saying that it's trait equalizable that gives the contradiction. It's the trait equalizable, well-retaining value and the being in the last world doesn't have value, right? If you say that you can trait equalize A to B while retaining value, that implies that the being in the last world has value. If you say the being in the last world doesn't have value, then you get the contradiction that the being in the last world does and doesn't have value. So to be clear, I'll just, I'll just repeat for emphasis. It's not that if someone says trade equalization is possible, you get a contradiction, right? I think it's possible. I don't think I'm contradicting myself. The problem, you get a contradiction if you say it's trade equalizable, well retaining value, and the being in the last world doesn't have value. Right. So there might have been. I think that maybe the that. problem has been the fact that <laughs> when you've described. Um, the trait equalization process in the past, I've interpreted it as um, object A. Wait, can we, can um, we stop for a second? Before, because this is what happened with Foot Soldier. When I hmm. pointed out to him a simple interpretation that made sense, he started justifying why his past interpretation where there was some kind of a problem was reasonable for him to take. Now, right now, I'm not arguing with you about whether your past interpretation was reasonable or not. I mean, mm -hmm. we, can, we can talk about that later if we want, but what we want to clarify right now is if under a proper interpretation, you see a problem here. Now, well, under the we can debate the word proper. But, by, sorry, um, under proper, I just, I just mean the interpretation that I'm offering. So let's yeah. remove proper, um, let's just I, say I, under I the wanna, interpretation I don't want to delve giving. into this because... Um, so what you'd be saying is that in P1, rather than, so when we say, if your view affirms a given human is trait equalizable to a given non-human uh, while retaining moral value, mm -hmm. what you'd be saying is that, um, that if probably, all right, okay. Yeah, the but then, value that but in then, all of those worlds in the series, in none of them does value disappear. So then okay. when you say in the last world, being doesn't have value, you get a contradiction. Okay. But like, I guess like for the human, this is the point. Like if you were to say universal, because I actually made that point. If you were to talk about pure universals, um, I don't see a problem if the, if the trait they pick is, um, is a universal. So if they say humanity, there's no real problem there with name the trait because then they can go through each stage and then eventually um, you could show like, all right, there's not a con like um, you, you could go like um, your view doesn't affirm that the cow at the end would have moral value. Uh, and then you'd say it hasn't shown a contradiction. Um, and that's fine. Um, but the issue is when there is a, because of the use of the word given, they can pick um, something uh, primal or particular. Well, so as I said, with, with idea of, let's say, sorry, if I was to pick- Can I, can I just keep us on, uh, right on track? Because the criticism, and i uh, sorry, you can pick up after this, but the criticism yeah. was that the trade equalization process entails a contradiction. And the contradiction mm -hmm. is that we have trade equalized and it's not the case that we've trade equalized. Mm -hmm. And I could understand what you were trying to get at there, where somehow the being in the last world like has its own history and like doesn't have its own history or, or yeah. some weird thing like this. But once we clarify that the being in the last world is just its own being, it's got its own history. It's got. It doesn't have the history of the being in the first world or something like this. That's you that's essentially what I was offering as a solution. This interpretation, because when I said there's a strong versus weak interpretation of trade equalization, what I was saying is that if we take trade equalization to not include um prim like thisness, primitive features of identity. What do you mean to, to not in include it? Because you have that feature in the first world, so it's involved in the process. It just goes away somewhere. 
but so that's the thing. A, if it goes away, it could not be true of the last object. And no one it says, says where has it ever been said that it's true of the oh, last? I don't. I don't know exactly what primitive identity means. I'm just taking that to mean that it has the identity, like all of the same properties, including weird, like trans world properties, like what world it exists in as the first yeah. object, right? And no, that's, well, that's never ever been my claim at any point. Uh, There's you will say, never just, find okay. me on record saying anything of the sort. Oh, right. it's just because on the on the, I'm on the Google Drive so of I. name the trip the yep. the deduction v five map, mm -hmm. um, and it says under one p one false, and then it has it is assumed that if all traits true of one object are equalized to the true of another, that any traits remaining after equalization are possessed by both objects. So when you said that it goes away somewhere, it couldn't go away somewhere if they're both possessed by some object. I, Do you I see think, what I mean? I think there's a bit of confusion there. So the idea is just. Say that the wor the um say that we trade equalize a human to an animal, okay? Mm -hmm. Now you understand in that process there's certain things that are gonna drop off, right? Like we're gonna dr intelligence, for example, is going to change, right? At some point mm -hmm. we're gonna be talking about a being with lower intelligence. But does the property of being an organism drop off somewhere? Doesn't seem to. That's all that I mean, right? If the property doesn't drop off, it's just something the animal has. Well, then I do have a bit of a problem with the way that's worded. Because <laughs> well, well, wait, wait with, with the way it's worded, or with the because I, I don't want to. What I want to avoid here is I think that all you guys have made these like what I take to be silly criticisms, but you know whatever. And whenever I start showing that. It just doesn't make any sense under a reasonable interpretation. Then it starts turning into, well, here's why my interpretation was reasonable. And I'm not interested in that debate. We can have that debate after if you want. Yeah, what yeah, I'm, that's what fine. What I'm interested in is I the mean, debate I mean, of under, I, oh, okay. under my interpretation, is there an issue? Okay. I'm going to, okay, I'll be more robust and say that I think that the purple box under P1 um, is not what you said there then. Um, because I think... The, so you're, um, you're telling the me interpretation, whether my interpretation you to say of that, my own words is yeah, my own interpretation. I think that, right? Yeah, I, I think that okay. you've, <laughs> you've wrote that wrong. <laughs> well, well, wait, but the, the, question, the question isn't what interpretation makes more sense to Lewis, right? The question is which does the interpretation I'm taking have a problem? Well, I, I guess it's, 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 it's whether the words themselves mean what that's supposed to mean because if you've said no, that this all is a shift of debate true one... topic sorry this this is a shift of debate topic what i want to know is if under the interpretation that i am taking if there is a problem now i've i've told you what i meant uh, and the your reaction that you've you're, said, you're... i actually don't see that much of a problem with but that's what i was okay. offering as a solution actually um okay to, well... to the but then i will that's, say that's that you have to understand then that there will be some meta ethical implications for example you would there will be some meta ethics that will implicitly deny p1 okay wait bef before we just one second the problem was supposed to be that there's a contradiction right and the contradiction is supposed to be that we have and haven't trade equalized now I, I don't know how how exactly you got to the interpretation you got to but what you said was that there's something weird about that box and when I told you how I interpret what's in that box, right, your your response was immediately to go, oh, well, that's that's not like what I took to me, which is which I take as meaning, Isaac, under your interpretation, there's no problem. I just had some other one where there was a problem. And if that's if we want to just say that's the case, that's fine. And we can just agree to disagree about whose interpretation was reasonable. The question I'm interested in is under my interpretation, is there an issue? My interpretation, again, um, is... What you said, I'll, I'll, what I'll finish you said very there, quickly. I don't see an issue. I don't see an issue at all. Okay. Um, that's, that's fine. Now, now I want to ask you something. Do you see any, any other way to get to this contradiction? Or, or was that it? No, the contradiction exists if we include those things that you said wouldn't be included. Which is that it would drop off. the contradiction exists under an interpretation that I don't take. Yeah, um, okay. kind of. Um, that's essentially, you can, that's you can make, offer you know that you as can separate make that criticism. You know, you can make that criticism of any argument, right? You can always say, under an interpretation other than, you can always say there is another interpretation where there's a problem, right? The question is, uh, oh, I, I, I agree. I agree. I guess. Isn't? I guess what may, yeah. I guess my point would be, 
Um, so if a criticism that, applies to all arguments, it's, it's not a good criticism, when it, right? When it's read, I guess my point would be that it's, the reason that I wrote both the strong and the weak is because then I, I think that in terms of your debates, for example, you'd have to understand that there are some metaethics that this argument couldn't be you know, applicable to. So that someone, let's say, like an uh, sorry, egoist, what, a particular I, question. Question: When you say this argument couldn't be applicable to, are you talking about my interpretation is not applicable, or are you talking about yeah, the your interpretation? Okay, so your where, where, and by not applicable, you mean it'll generate a contradiction on that meta ethic? Um, yes. Okay, so on what meta ethic does my interpretation yield a contradiction? So, if, for example, if we take a particularist who mm -hmm. values the a given human in world A mm -hmm. or world one. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were to say that the what they value includes world one, being of world one. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be a particularist you, to value a trans world property. But okay. You don't have to be. I just think it's easy that way, you know, because it's like you don't have to like the, the, it, the very it, particular. It actually, not, it actually is not even really relevant. Like you could you could have pretty much whatever view and you could value the trans world property. Well, I actually I actually mentioned this in what I wrote. I said that you could have um, subjectivists um, and you could have. Um, you have a moral realist who values the trans world property. Yeah, you could, you could, and, but like, I think but not um, that particularism is in tension with realism. But I think moral realism would have to then give a robust claim as to why being of a certain world was was uh, like, for example, an egoist may may do that. Um, but the the okay, we could say egoist, whatever. The the point of what I'm trying to say is essentially that well, if those, it includes a property that if trait equalized, so if you would have of world one and of world a hundred, like so, the cow at the end could not be of both world one and world a hundred. You would agree. Yeah, of course, but why okay. would why would my interpretation entail that it would be of world one and world one hundred? Because if they've said that's morally relevant, mm -hmm. and it's being trade equalized, mm -hmm. and if all things true of the object are being trade equalized, then that could not possibly be trade equalized, which forces the incoherency. When we say trade equalized, it sounds like you think that means carried into the final world is that what you think trade equalized means no my my, my point is is that the, like, the trans world that... property of being in world one is only in world one on on my interpretation right yeah but if you're yeah, that, well, the, yeah. the whole point is is that then if your interpretation takes that 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 if someone was to claim that being of world one Mm -hmm. that they would implicitly uh, is valuable they would implicitly reject p1 they would not be able to trade equalize do you see what Why? i mean no no no. if they when, i think there's confusion about what trade equalization means right okay if so there's the property of being in world one and someone can say that's the trait right they value the trans mm -hmm. world property of being yeah. in world one now when we talk about trade equalization it doesn't matter whether you value that or not. That property only exists in world one, right? There's nothing agree, about yeah. valuing that property that entails that we can't... Logically. Well, there's, there's nothing about valuing that property that entails that we can't set up a series of possible worlds with variations on the first world towards the last world in between. But right? then Val valuing this it, is my issue. I, I think there is because let's say we take, okay, okay now in world two, you're not a, it's not in world one anymore right the trans world property is not true the property being in world one is only true in world one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether so you value it or not it, how is it yeah how is it being equalized if that trait cannot be moved all it means through that equalization process all it means to wait but <laughs> all it means to equalize is to have one world another world and then a series in between where the first becomes more and more like the last so what was how did you phrase your question you said how is it being trade equalized if it's only if in it the doesn't first include world? if it doesn't include that that uh, you, what what is being claimed to be morally relevant trait like if that trait is not being moved from the original world but is of moral relevancy hmm. how is it being equalized into the last one like how is it true of it, the last object it doesn't it sounds again like you're saying that trade equalization is about properties in the first world somehow being like moved into the last world or something. I'm not sure well, that's what because exactly. The only reason I'm saying that is because 
that is of that particular world. I, I don't understand. Say that we have intelligence, right? And we equalize a human to an animal. Intelligence mm -hmm. drops off somewhere, just like being in world one drops off somewhere. What, how is there an issue there? But like, trade, trade say, equalization like, just means you set up that series of worlds. It doesn't mean that there aren't properties that drop off. The whole thing is that properties drop off as you move through the series of worlds. That's the idea. I'll try and I'll try and formulate this a, a different way. Okay. So, take your time, like really. I'm just trying to say it in a way that's not going to be. Um... No, it's it's fine. Like honestly, take your time and think it out. We'll we'll hash it out. Take as long as you need. Would you say that, uh, just a quick question, if you were to say that, um, because it says like, if a view affirms a given human is trade equalizable to a given non-human animal whilst retaining moral value. Um, if you were to say that, um, a I know given what you're trying human... to say. If you say, if you say that value is retained throughout the process, but that value is uh, <laughs> in, in virtue of a property that only exists in world one, then that person is just contradicting himself. They're just saying values retained through the process, and it's not the case that values retained through the process. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Well, I mean, I guess the way I would have I would have phrase it is that let's say if we want to ask you a question, like if someone said, let's say, being of world one, um, <laughs> would you say that that is trade like that? That trade like, equalizable example, just means is part of the trade equalization process. That's all it means. Okay, so, and through this trade equalization process, if someone said self awareness, mm -hmm. um, how would you how would you walk them through that? Like, just give us an example, just to make sure. Well, so right. yeah, that's fine. So the first thing you always want to do when people name traits is to make sure that they fit the category of differential properties. So if someone answers name the trait by saying, "Well, it's being an organism." That's actually a category error because they're naming something that's true of both beings. It has to be something that's true of one and not the other. That's what we're referring to. So if someone were to say mm -hmm. self-awareness, unless they take the view that animals aren't self-aware, in which case yeah. then we have to have a separate discussion that's not to do with name the trait about whether animals are self-aware. If they say self-awareness, but they accept that animals are self-aware, that's just a category error. They're not naming something that's a differential property. They're naming something that's a shared property. Or yeah, you could make another kind of category error where you name something that's not true of either, right? Like the traits being Superman. Well, humans aren't Superman and animals aren't Superman. So that's not a differential property, right? It has to be yeah. something true of one and not the other, not something true of both or neither. Okay. And okay. So Self-awareness is true like, of both. If you were to say something like intelligence uh, mm -hmm. to um, a degree of having an IQ of over 100. Yes, sure. And the given animal with a cow, yes. uh, which has an IQ. IQ of let's say less than fifty. Mm -hmm. I don't know how actually high. I, IQ I, I don't know, but I follow. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, how would you walk them through that process? Well, there's. I mean, I don't know what you mean by walk them through, but if you're asking, well, like, what, how would you trade equalize? Sorry. Yeah. So at some point in the trade equalization process, intelligence would drop off. Okay. So if they valued intelligence, um, and it dropped off at let's say world five, mm -hmm. right? Now you have a non-intelligent. Um, you know, like marginal case yeah, of a person. human. Yeah. Uh, and um, would you say that um... Th this is someone who's who's not accepting P two though? Remember, this argument that, and I don't want to throw in too much information here, but this argument is only to be run after asking the first question in the dialogue flow tree. If someone mm -hmm. says that, yeah, there's uh, there's no trait. Right, that's that's setting up P two as true, right? So if you're talking about someone who's naming the trait, who thinks that there is a point where value drops off, you wouldn't even be running this argument on them. You'd be in the dialogue flow tree, right? Because that person doesn't accept P two. There is some point where value drops off. So so they don't the, say it's trade equalizing so or retaining value. The goal they of say this, it loses value the, somewhere. The, the goal of this argument is to show that they will value the cow at the end. 
No, the or whatever this, animal. this get it, getting into the goal is a bit of a separate thing. Goal uh, now that in fact that's going to add a lot of baggage, right? Because a goal yeah. is um that that's going to have to do with what someone's intention is when running the argument. So theoretically, yeah. someone could have all sorts of weird goals. Someone's goal could be to create a waffle, right? So that battle, okay, yeah. and they could just okay. I'll work that differently. Um, I'd say that the, the function of the the argument functions to show a contradiction if the individual values the animal at the end of the trade equalization process or does it, does not value the animal rather at the end of the trade equalization process. close but again just just like earlier when i said it's not just saying that they're trade equalizable that gives you the contradiction it's not just saying the animal is it's valuable that gives you the contradiction because you and i hold the view that the animal is valuable at the end of the trade equalization process and i don't think either of us think we're contradicting ourselves the contradiction comes from the combination of these things okay they're trade equalizable, value is retained, but the animal doesn't have value. It's those three, right? And if you answer that first question by, again, I'll just go over to it. On your current moral view, if all traits true of a given human who has moral value are switched to match those true of a given non-human animal who doesn't have moral value, is there any point in the trade equalization process where moral value is lost? If they say no, they're saying the human who has value is equalizable to the animal who doesn't have value, well, um, sorry, well, well retaining, or uh, sorry, let me just uh, walk through that again. I lost my own words. Uh, is there any point in the trait? Yeah, right. So they're saying a human who has value is equalizable to an animal who doesn't have value without value being uh, lost anywhere in the process. So we're getting an affirmation that human has value, animal doesn't, and the human is equalizable to the animal while retaining value, right? So it's when they say no to that first question in the dialogue flow, <laughs> dialogue flow, sorry for the voice crack, that you get the, uh, that you get the contradiction, right? So this, this, right. the point of the syllogism is just to bar off a no answer to that first question. Because some people, it's, it's very silly when you think about it, but some people will try to say, yeah, one has value, the other doesn't. They're trade equalizable, and uh, value isn't lost anywhere. It's like, wait, but that's just, <laughs> I'll just give you a contradiction. If value isn't lost anywhere, the being in the last world has value, but you just said it doesn't. That's right, the idea. because, as you see, like, it seems to me that then P1 is basically saying that, like, if so, for someone to affirm P1, then they would have to be saying that a given human is trade equalizable. Um, so if, like, an egoist was to pick this up, they would say that, you know, I am trade equalizable to an animal whilst retaining moral value. Um, but then they would would they not be incoherent in affirming that? Because if they were to say that they were trade equalizable to a, a human, um, you'd say that you'd animal. agree that that would be Sorry, a contradiction. Yeah, I, I, and I, I would have, agree I too. Think you, I think you might have um, spoken incorrectly. In you just said trade equalizable to a human. I assume you mean to an oh, animal, right? To an animal, yes. Yeah, sorry. Okay, sorry. sorry um, say it again. I lost it. No, no, that's fine. Um, if, so the, the point is, if, if your view affirms a given human is trade equalizable to a given non-human animal whilst, while retaining moral value. Mm -hmm. So the point of what they'll be saying is that, let's say I, Ego uh, Lewis, is trade equalizable, so can be slowly converted through a series of, uh, like slowly, um, mm -hmm. you know, slowly uh, metamorphized through a series of more, uh, modal worlds mm -hmm. to a given non-human animal mm -hmm. uh, and then at the end i would retain moral value it's saying it's it's almost as yeah, if, if they saying that then if say the animal does have value to affirm you that you would have to be able to say that if i were a cow that that, that, that they would be in they would be incoherent in affirming it if you see what i'm saying so we're saying like if i am a cow then i have moral value wait but, but there, then there's no there's no saying that i am a cow that's not entailed anywhere it, it kind of is for an egoist, so that this is what I'm trying to say. I do so not think so. If they say that, like, if they if they if they say that, like, uh, that they are trait equalizable, <clears throat> and they accept that the one of, part of their traits is this psychological continuity, and that's um, uh, they would have to basically say that that psychological continuity was equalizable, and that that could be in that that sorry that psychological continuity could exist within the animal. No, so that the, the, you keep you keep misunderstanding what equalizable means. Equalizable doesn't mean that like any given property is going to be retained all the way through to the last world. Equalizable just means that you can perform the trade equalization on the being. Yeah, right? I, I guess I guess this Inte is the point I'm trying to say. Intelligence, for example, drops they off affirm, somewhere, right? Yeah. If they take a primitive notion of of, of identity, mm -hmm. 
as I don't, um, know, I don't know what that means like what do you mean by primitive so, so primitive would be like like for example um it would be like you know like you know direct relation extensive so no. like if i would say like this <laughs> cup, no idea yeah so like this cup could only be this cup yeah, if you know I, what i mean I, I, and it yeah. couldn't be and then if i had a separate cup here it would have the property of not being that cup yeah that that those like notions of primitive identity would be to say that there are What's numer the like for example, between... numerical identity would be like this so, sorry just, is there, that... can, I, I might be able to make it easier to understand for myself is there a distinction yeah. between identity and primitive identity um you could have aspects of identity which are like like the reason i'm saying primitive because like the the the, so the idea is, of primitive just, identity make, would make, be to make say that for, like make it easy for me please is there a distinction between identity and primitive identity <sighs> The can be. Well, if if it, they're, they're either they're either, either they're either is if, or isn't. They're the, either they either refer to the same concept kind of or a different concept. Because identity identity includes like notions of numerical identity, for example. Because it's not a single kind of identity. So if we were to say like there was like there are certain identities, for example, in universals, where I could say they both share the identity of being a cup. Do you see what I mean? No, and I, I don't. I, I don't. I just so, don't understand if if we're saying that. Look, I understand that you're trying to say that there's a contradiction that trade equalization has happened and hasn't happened, and you think the contradiction exists on certain meta ethics. You think it exists on egoism, and you think that that's because. No, I, I, I think that the egoist would implicitly. Didn't, I think the egoist, if they were being rational would have to reject p1 wait but that's a different criticism i thought the criticism sorry then, one sec we might we might have lost track let me just clarify is the criticism now have we dropped the criticism that there's a contradiction and we're just saying that the the egoist just rejects p1 the, yeah that's my point like if we take the what so it's not just said, to be clear it's not about a contradiction you're just saying it's not about a, it's not about it's not about a contradiction if the egoist the, the egoist could not affirm p1 is what i'm trying to say oh you mean that if the egoist accepts p1 they'd get a contradiction yes okay so what would the contradiction oh, be like the, the the point is is that like any egoist particularist or anyone who affirms that moral value uh exists in forms of primitive identity that this argument couldn't what, be I can't keep using that term if i don't know what it means all so, right okay sorry yeah. um any I, I, form of like just, if you just say identity I know what you okay, mean. Identity. Uh, identity. Okay, identity. That's fine. Um, sure. If they affirm that it is um, a particular identity mm -hmm. uh, and that it cannot be, um, and that they always value the particularity of that identity, that they must always reject P1. Um, and if we were to say that, that then there would, be, there would be only certain applications in which name the trait. Like you, you, you could present it to an egoist um, and they would, they would probably be very confused. <laughs> Um, but the point of what I'm saying is that it would only be applicable to certain meta ethics. Then um, that's why I, that's why I described it as the strong versus weak. Okay. So like a strong, and that's not to say like in terms of um, let's just, you know let's just good stay on and bad. That I, I, I'll just try to I'll just try to understand that because th this is largely you have the criticism. I'm trying to understand the criticism. So yeah, if that's... if the criticism is that for an egoist accepting P1 is true yields a contradiction i don't see why that would be you seem no, to be I guess, saying I guess that what it's I'm, to I guess do what with I'm them valuing is... identity they value the identity of the being in world one that specific identity kind of like valuing the trans world property of being in world one it's like they value something that's just specific to world one that's supposed to be part of the problem here um i guess what i'm i guess what i'm trying to say is that like um that uh, like so, if we were to say like so, it says if your view affirms that a given human is trade equalizable to a given non-human animal whilst mm -hmm. retaining moral value. Yep. So, if so, let's say the egoist, um, the egoist would have to reject that as they're saying like my view doesn't. In, in all cases, like at least all like depending upon like they might be aware of it, for example. Sorry, but if they uh, another question, are you saying that the, the egoist is rejecting? that their view affirms a human is trade equalizable to an animal while retaining moral value yes 
Okay, but that's that's rejecting the antecedent of a conditional. That doesn't falsify the conditional. Yeah, no, that, that's what I'm, I'm not saying that your argument's wrong now. Well, you, you were I'm saying, saying that on egoism, it's, it's only it's only like, like it's only applicable to certain meta-ethical positions. Then, but I'm trying to understand see, what like, the argument of that is. You see, because like what I had because in past discussions, and I, I'm saying if I'm wrong, you said that people's meta-ethical position did not matter. Yeah, I don't um, see. I don't see how. I don't see any meta ethic that would somehow result in a rejection of P one. That's right. So that they would. They, so you think any meta ethic could affirm that their view? Yeah. Well, it's, I mean? it's not P one. Isn't about affirming that your view says a human is trade equalizable while retaining value. That that's that's just a claim. Like that. That's just a proposition. It is the case that it's equalizable while retaining value. P1 is a conditional that if your view says that, then yeah. saying that the being in the last world doesn't have value gives you a contradiction. So you're, you you don't reject P1 by saying my view doesn't say that they're equalizable while retaining value. That's P2 that says that, right? Mm -hmm. So you how 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 so when like my um, I, I'm, I guess I guess okay then I guess we could move on to P2 then actually then maybe it may be better to but say that, P2. But that's that's not interesting because P2. So of course you can reject P2. The argument is only meant to be run if you say no to the first question in the dialogue flow tree, right? Which has put you in the mm. category of saying P2 is true, right? There's plenty of people who P2 isn't true for, so the argument never gets run, right? If you start asking someone... Yeah, th no, that, uh, that's that's essentially what I was trying to say with, like, the weak interpretation. Like, so if I was to say that, like, when I said the weak interpretation, I'd say that, like, all, like particularists egoists and so on would probably be i think p2 is the where they'd be rejected i think you're right actually well no a particularist um, it would be just, implicitly okay. rejecting p2 okay one, one in which second. case the argument's not applicable okay there's a there's a few there's a few things in fact there's two okay so first of all the criticism that accepting p1 while being an egoist is a logical contradiction we're dropping that right only, uh, only because of the variation of interpretation, where you say trade equalization does not include primitive identity, that I, it drops I, off. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really care why, because why? Or, or like, why it doesn't it include, just it doesn't like include like just, identity of indiscernibles. Why just uh, sounds like an effort to justify the past interpretation, which I don't care about, right? I'm, I'm just asking. You're no, so we're not anymore on this claim that. If you're an egoist, it's a contradiction to accept P1. We're not saying that anymore. Um, not if not if the interpretation doesn't include, um, you know, like for example, certain okay. forms of identity. You, you can you can all you can always say, look, you can always say when someone says, when someone asks you, is it a contradiction to be an X and you know accept this thing? You can always say, well. You know, under some interpretation, it's it's a contradiction, right? Because there's a, infinite interpretations, and you can just pick one that contradicts some some proposition entailed by you being. See, an I, I don't think. I, I, you see, I disagree. That, I don't. I, you see, I guess I guess I disagree okay, but, with the but, idea but, of there being infinite interpretations. Okay, that, then um, let, that okay, but that's let, look. If that's a disagreement, that's let's, 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 <laughs> let's just set that aside for a second. Okay, there's there's a lot of interpretation. Okay, but look here here's the the point. Okay. I'm I'm asking about on my interpretation, on the interpretation that I have given you. On your interpretation, there is no problem. There's no contradiction for an egoist to accept P1 on my interpretation. On your interpretation as you've given it, no. Okay, cool. And then you were suggesting that there would be if they accepted P2? Um that th th I would say that they would be they would be incoherent if they accepted P2. So that they, and, and that, this is this is egoists that, and particularists and uh, yeah. So like there were certain meta ethical views that would implicitly have to reject P two, uh, and so they wouldn't be able to run through the so argument. You, so you, know you don't think that it's possible to be a particularist and value the animal? And oh the no no, oh no no. I I I I'm not saying that it's not. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying that there are certain meta ethical views depending upon what the person is defending. That would implicitly reject P two. That Wait, it would be impossible I, for it would be impossible to trade equalize. I thought you just said you're not saying that it's impossible. That sounded like a contradiction. It sounded like you said you're not saying it's impossible. Then you're saying that it is impossible. Is the claim that it's Sorry. impossible for an egoist or a particularist uh, for P two oh, to be true no, for them? 
Oh, oh sorry, because I, I added, I added a, um, I, I, I give a, I give context. I was saying that, like, for example, not all forms of egoism, particularism, uh, and so on are identical, which we can agree with. There are so many different forms of metaethics under each branch um, that give a variation of different traits and or or, or um. But, or but, uh, value propositions towards individuals, right? But but is now, is P two is it a contradiction for an egoist or a particularist to accept P two? Well, it would be dependent upon their position, wouldn't it? Well, wait wait a second. So if they hold the view that value drops off somewhere, then of course they're going to reject P two. But it's not a contradiction for them to accept it. Right? It's not a contradiction to be an egoist or a particularist and to say, yeah, I value, I, when we set up that trade equalization, I value all this shit. I value the animal. I value myself. I, val I, val well, I don't know why we're running it on myself, but I value the human. I value the animal. I value everything in between. An egoist can say that. A particularist can say that. And if they can, then they'd be accepting P2. So, of course, it's possible to reject P2, but it's not in virtue of being an egoist or a particularist that you're rejecting but P2. I'm saying one, that, one second, like, please, no, but please. I, I guess not, what I'm, I, not, what I'm saying is that in virtue point? of being an egoist, for example, someone would say that because I'm an egoist, that moral value is not retainable whilst being trade equalized. It's, it's Do you not, see what I mean? It's not because of being an egoist, because it's possible for an egoist to accept P2, right? It's because of well, what that particular person values. Well, you see, this is this is where we disagree. I would say that... Um, you, sorry, when you say we disagree, you're saying that egoism necessarily entails a rejection of P2? N no, what I'm saying is okay, that like a person's values isn't, isn't anything to do with their metaethical position uh in terms of, i mean unless they're a, unless they're a value pluralist and it specifically relates to the values wait, wait, but that logical uh, uh, the actual argumentation just, just to in be, terms of that meta I, I need to be clear about what the claim is sorry i don't i don't mean to be rude look is oh no is no the, it's okay I'm not okay i'm just i'm just getting lost with what you're saying are you saying that it's necessarily entailed by egoism and or particularism that p2 is false no, well, first I would say that's it. That's it. I mean, like, I don't know if all forms of uh, let's say egoism, because you could have social contract theory, which is extrinsic moral value, for example, under an e egoist position, which uh, I think. Uh, Let's just. So your view of MC Trigo has been given on Clearly, you could be an egoist and you could value the beings no, in I, every no, world in the series. Well, I, I, the, 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 what I'm what I'm trying to say is that. You could that if you're an if, like if you're an egoist, then you would be rejecting the notion of trade equalization as incoherent. Wait, but now it sounds like we're going back to talking about like P one also, <laughs> like just just to be but clear, like, I just like, I just so, need so to like, understand if, if, if this is no no claim. no. If I'm I'm saying that like because like when when we say that like there are <clears throat> like. Hmm. 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 Look, just think about it. Obviously, someone could be a particularist, and they could, for particular reasons, right? There's no general principle of why they value the beings, right? For particular reasons, they value every being in every world that we're talking about, right? A particularist can say that. There's nothing about being a particularist that means you have to reject P2. I don't think I actually have an issue. Okay. So long as, like, I think that at this point, the only thing I actually have an issue is with is with this purple box that says that if all traits true of one object are equalized to those true of another, that any traits remaining after equalization are, are possessed in both objects. Do you want me to, to um, explain and also, my interpretation do you know that, again? Do you know that sphere diagram that you gave where it had, like, two spheres... And then all yeah. of the the things made equal. Mm -hmm. um, Veneer made the, that. Like, That's from Veganimation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the point is, is that like the sphere is actually quite useful because that's an example given in metaphysics um, about Leibniz's law, and whether it would be the same sphere in non -Euclid non Euclidean geometry. Um, the point of what I'm saying is that certain metaethics um, 
if we were to include those traits as being, you know, shifted over, would cause them to be the same sphere because it would cause an indiscernible identity. Okay. Now, what you're saying is that they wouldn't be shifted over and that they would actually be lost along the process of trade equalization, in which case I don't have a problem. Yeah, there are things um, that are lost and things that aren't. If you equalize me to you, okay, at some point, the property of, you know, having so, a green screen behind you right now is lost. And yeah. the, the property of, you know, being a human isn't lost. There's thi the things that great. are differential. I, think, I don't think we've really somewhere. got a problem anymore. I don't even think okay. we've got a problem anymore. Well, because, because I think that what I took it as is that all traits true of one object are equalized to those true of another. Um, and I took that as including, like, obviously, that they would actually obtain these traits. Yeah, well, if you're saying like that's not the case, then, then uh, it, it, you know, uh, uh, we'll, we'll put it down to different interpretations. We can, like, I'm happy to do that. Sure. But, but... Yeah, but there's not say, a problem on my interpretation. That's I what will you're saying. say... If I if I may, and then this is this is this is this this is not a are, criticism. Are you about of, like, say your interpretation. Re rewrite that. Just rewrite that purple box. Like, <laughs> um, I I well the thing is I don't share your view that that box is unclear. But uh, let's just put that aside for a second. We can talk about that if you want. Yeah. But it sounds like we're almost on board about the argument. We agree. Yeah, the argument, as far as you've given it at this point, I actually think is fine. Okay, and by fine we mean sound. Sound. Okay, great. Well, that's really awesome. I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, do we want to have a whole conversation now about what interpretation is reasonable? Or do we want to end? Do we want to talk about some other shit like moral realism? <laughs> what do you want to do? Um, I'm, still, can, I'm still um, free until for another... I have a, a whole hour I can blow, so whatever you want to talk about. Um, or we can end. I don't care. Whatever you prefer, Lewis. Um, and thank well, you I for mean, taking the time to work this out and being good faith. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. I, I, I always intend to be in good faith. Like that, that that's actually like, uh, like I think it's a characteristic of philosophy. I think it's unphilosophical to to go into a conversation in bad faith. I think it's uh, if you if you go into a conversation insincere and you're not pursuing truth, then you're a sophist. You know, you're trying to find contradiction and you're trying to um, you're not trying to actually get towards truth. And I think that's how Taylor uh, characterizes sophism as. Um, I think characterizes sophism as being um a differing in 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 virtue of moral value and in, in how they're actually approaching the conversation and um, and I, I like to hope that at least most of the time i at least try and and, and be sincere as much much as possible i i don't think I, at least i don't intend to be insincere i'd have to th um, sure i'll accept that and I don't, I don't know if i don't know if all motivations other than tr a truth seeking qualify for sophistry I'd, I'd have to think about that it seems like there could probably be other like noble interpretations that aren't sophistry but maybe maybe that is the case i'd have to i'd have to think about that but yeah i'm glad, I'm glad um, we could get on the same page though that that's great so yeah. I, I appreciate that um yeah and okay so if we just have a quick thing about this little purple box Sure. So you tell me if about I was to say that, that all traits true of one object are equalized to another, I guess... Um, equalized just means we put them in the World Series. Okay, we'll put them in the World Series. But then it says that, that any traits remaining after equalization are possessed by both objects. Right. So you would say that say... after equalization, they wouldn't actually be there. I don't know what that means. So like, like for example... Uh, being of world one at world of hundred wouldn't actually be there obviously okay but then how could they be possessed by both objects so when we say something is possessed by both like i mean i'll just give an example i think that's the easiest way because when i did that before you seem to understand and agree yeah. so say that we equalize a human to an animal at some point does the property of intelligence drop off yes yeah, I mean, you have to say yes unless you think animals yeah, are like human level like you or something. And yeah. do, but does the property of being an organism drop off? No. No, so that's just to say any any property that doesn't drop off is a shared property. That's all it's saying. Okay, and then you could you could have shared properties, um, and that's fine. They can be, like, for example, categor categories are universals and stuff like that. That's great. Now I understand that. Like, I don't for know example, if I organism. follow that, but, but, but continue. Yeah. Um, but if we were to say that, you know, the, you know, um, if we were to say that, um, we include, but if, if we were to say that, like, uh, we would have to accept that there were some things that not 
all traits true, not all, couldn't like some traits could not be in both worlds. Yeah, so there's, being a there's, uh, let me draw a distinction. World, there's some things world, that can't be trait that can't that can't be um that, that there's some things that that can't be true of both objects. Right. That can't be true of both objects, but that's not the same as saying that they're not trade equalized. Trade equalized just means they're in the process. But in which case, if they can't be true of both objects, mm -hmm. then And just for people that... listening to clarify, a trait that for example can't be true of both objects is existing in world one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's that's brilliant. Um, in which case, we would say that, like, so, for example, it is assumed that all traits true of one object are equalized to those of another, that any remaining are possessed by both objects. Mm -hmm. So we would say that, like, for example, trait of being world of being in world 100 that exists in the cow could not exist between both objects as well. Mm -hmm. So there are Wait, there are sorry. some I don't, aspects. I don't know if I heard that right. Sorry, continue. No, so the sorry. human, so the human that was in world one. That is the that is the first object. I'm assuming that is being. E oh, wait a minute, right? Yeah, because that would no longer. So what you would actually be doing at the end, the idea is to say that a equals a. It's a tautology at the end. Yeah. Yeah, you're just talking about. You, you just. I mean, I don't. I don't know exactly how you mean that, but at the end, you just have the one being in the one world. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. If you just have the one, then there's not two objects. So I guess what's confused us is that you've described two well, objects, two objects but at the end it seems like there's only one and it's tautological. Well, well, two, you see two what I mean? Objects, two objects refers well, to two objects well, refers to the one over here and the one over here in the different worlds. Yeah. It's not it's in, not, in which it's case, not this object is it's in this world mixing together into a, a morph being or man bear being exactly, or something. Sure. It's, it's confusing when you say that that um <sighs> when you say that any traits remaining after equal equalization are in both objects because after trade equalization there's only one object it's it's just to say like i mean I, I i guess i don't know how to how to be any more simple like all that i mean is what we both agreed makes sense which is if something if something drops off right like say we're talking about intelligence right it's like intelligence drops off it's not it's not a shared property right like being in world one drops off it's not a shared property mm -hmm. um being an organism doesn't drop off that is a shared property it's just to say if it drops off it's a shared property uh sorry so i said that backwards ignore that last sentence if it drops off it's not a shared property if it doesn't drop off it is a shared property I, and i and i completely get that and so if it doesn't drop off then it's then you would say that it was possessed by both objects yeah, if it doesn't drop off, then it's a shared property. Yeah, except you kept saying that when we get to the end of trade equalization, there is just one object, a cow, for both example. Objects, both objects doesn't mean two, two objects in the last world. Both objects means the object in the first world and the object in the last world. Uh, exactly, which means that there are some things true of the cow, which still could not be true of the human. Yeah, there are things. there are things that are differential and there are things that are shared right so like intelligence is going to drop off somewhere right they don't have but the same if, intelligence if, it's not if, a shared property being an organism agree, doesn't being so you would agree that does. there are some things so you would agree that there are some things at the end that are true of the cow that still would not be true of the human i mean there's there's a, a whole shitload the, the it's two different worlds the human like there's intelligence right. there's you know morphology there's um I don't know, like the level of self awareness. Maybe there's like the the vocalizations they make. There's like the whole the whole idea is that there's things that aren't the same between the cow and the human. Then, in which case, like I guess what confused us was it says that it says that any traits remaining after equalization are possessed by both objects. Do you see what I mean? So right. I took it that everything that the cow would have would be within the human at the end because the equalization process has been completed be and that they the both human. contain those traits. I, I don't know exactly how you mean that, but if the idea is like that the human, like for some reason, something like being in world one is supposed to be a property of both. It's like, just, just no. <laughs> like, or, or not, anything that, like, like for example, the the cow couldn't con like. I mean, the fact that it is a cow, it couldn't can it couldn't have the op it couldn't yeah, that's have not the a shared property. Well, obviously, yeah, a human exactly, doesn't exactly. share the property being so, a cow. 
so I guess I, I I would honestly and um and I don't know like you know the audience can decide whether I'm right in saying this as well like and and whether they would they would understand this the same. But I truly think that if you say you shouldn't say that any traits remaining after equalization are possessed are possessed by both objects, um because that's not true. Well, when you say that, it's just like if it doesn't drop off like intelligence, or sorry, like uh, being an organism, it's something that they both have, both objects meaning the one in world one and the one in world 100 or however many worlds there are. Um, I if think it's, you, if it's you better... there at the end, then it's, it's something that the first being has also, right? Yeah, except for the identity of the object at the end, because the identity of the object at the end, if there are two objects and it's because you say both, um, it couldn't, it couldn't, ha it couldn't share that. You see what I mean? So it's either one or both. I don't, Do you know I'm what not, I mean? I'm not well, sure if I followed. I might, it's possible I misspoke, but it's just the idea is there are things that drop off and there are things that don't drop off. So there's things that are shared between the first world and the last world, and there's things that aren't. If they're shared, they don't drop off anywhere. If they're not shared, like for example, like the trans world property, they will drop off somewhere. Yeah, and I, I'm actually totally fine with that. Okay. But I do not like what you've written there does not say that. Um I don't I guess I don't see how. Because what you're saying is that that like if you were to say that anything shared would exist in both objects um at the end, that's fine. If you were to uh, well not you would say anything shared would exist in both objects, that's fine. Um, but that's like saying, like for example, at the start, a human shares the the trait of being an organism with the cow. So there would have never been at at the start. They would also share them. At the end, um, at the end, uh, so at the start and at the end, they still share those traits. Like that, the, that that is an unchanging relationship between object in world one and world one hundred. Yeah, it's um, just, there's things that drop off and things that don't. Yeah. In which case, it's like. Like, like that's fair enough, but then you wouldn't say that. Um, like, like that. But then you would say that you couldn't say that all traits true of one object. So, like, all traits true of the end object couldn't be in the first object because not all. It's it's a particular set. It's the shared traits. Do you see what I mean? I'm I'm not sure I see what you mean. It's just you just follow object one, okay? You equalize mm -hmm. object one to, you know, object two over there in that other world. If something drops off, it's not mm -hmm. a shared property. And if it doesn't drop off, it is a shared property. But there was, like, for example, there so is something like the, that... The world that we're talking about, the world index, like the trans world property, that drops off, not a shared property. Intelligence, that drops off, not a shared property. Would, would you, being would you say that, like, for example, being, being on planet Earth you... doesn't drop off? So just to clarify, you would say that the cow. Um, so you'd say that the that cow, for example, at the end, know. wouldn't have the property of being of world one hundred. The cow at the end, it's in world uh -huh. one hundred. Okay, it's in world one hundred, and I mean a hundred's an arbitrary number. In case anyone's literally thinking, yeah, that I know, I, I, I got that, I got that. Um, I know you do. I'm just saying for people who end up watching. Uh, um. So let's say the cow, if that has that property, then you would say that that would not be true, though, of, obviously you agreed that it wouldn't be true of the other object. Yeah, it doesn't, it, the, so the initial, well, yeah, so if the property, sorry, the property of being in world 100? Yeah, could yeah, not be true. Yeah, there, again, Tons of things are not true of both objects. The intelligence, but, uh, the... being in world 100 happens after the trait equalization process has occurred, yes? Yeah. So, you would say that it was true of one of the objects? I'm not sure I understand what you mean there. So, being, that... being in world 100 is true of the cow? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, if that's true of the cow, then how is it that any trait remaining after equalization is possessed by both objects if a trait is true anything true of a particular object remaining in the first object as we equalize it it doesn't remain because it wasn't there to start with in the first object 
remaining as something that was there to start in the first object and didn't go away anywhere. So being in world 100, it's true at the end, but it's not there to oh, start. Oh, I see so what you're saying. Mean. I see what you're trying to get at, right? Okay, I see what you're trying to get at. I see what you're trying to get at. Okay. Yeah, are, um, are you thinking any... I think the confusion is, are you, are you going anything that's true in the last world well, it's there, yeah. so it must be true in the first. But that yeah. would just mean the first yeah, exactly. world that's, is that's just why I was a cow. Like, that, that does not make sense. No, no, that does not make sense. Okay, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, let me let me read that and see. Now that I know what you're getting at, if that phrasing um, strikes me, I will I will read this honestly and tell you if that occurs to me or not. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. That's it's fair assumed enough. that if all traits true of one object are equalized to those true of another, that any traits remaining after equalization are possessed by both objects. Consider the image below. All traits true of a given human are switched to match those true of the given non-human animal. A, B, and D would be retained in the human. It is talking pretty clearly about retention there. Uh, thereby allowing us to infer that the given non-human animal already possessed those traits. To me, I gotta say, I think it's clear, but I'm not gonna tell you that, you know, you're off in, like, complete crazyville with your interpretation. But, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think that there's sufficient basis for misinterpretation that i personally feel like i would give another uh iteration of the argument oh that's I'll fair enough. i'll tell you that's what if i notice can, some conceptual I'll, I'll tell you what though if i notice some conceptual problem that requires a v6 that's actually big enough for that i'll add that tweak also as just like a bonus right because it's like that's not enough for me to want to actually give a, another version of the argument but i i agree the most things you can control for the more fucking clear you can make it the better so if something does come yeah. up that is big enough, I'll throw that in there too, and I'll try to I'll try to make it extremely clear. They're talking about things retained in the first or retained. I guess, the trade I guess my process, main issue, I as guess, in then things that were true is, at the start in the first world. Yeah. yeah, I guess like just if you could just change one thing, I guess I'll just say rather than saying all traits true of one object, you say that all traits true of the first object are equalized to those true of another. That would probably be me me fine. Yeah, I appreciate that that is more clear. Again, I don't yeah. think that it's sufficiently problematic. Just because when you say I, one, when you, I know, I understand. I, under, I understand what you're when saying. You, said you don't even object. need to repeat it. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And I'm just replying to it by saying, I appreciate that there could be more clarity there. And if I, at any point, see an issue that's big enough to actually require a revision of this, I'll throw that in. But that alone is not enough for me to want to do a revision. I think that's fair. Fair enough. Fair okay. enough. Um, Anything else? Um, or? Well, I guess we could do a meta ethics debate whether, like, because I, I want to get I into that. That's a big about... one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not now. I was going to say not now, um, because I've I've got to shoot off soon. Well, I found um, this a very good faith and reasonable conversation. Um, and if you if you've always been this good faith, then I've misread you. Um, I'd I'd have to go watch your videos back and see if I can get this same read on you, or if I think they were bad faith. But I appreciate this conversation. And yeah, if you want to set up a future debate on, you know, whatever topic, meta ethics, something like that, that's fine also. Yeah, I was thinking maybe something like um, whether if subjectivism is true, whether veganism is meaningless. Um, yeah, I'm, or meaningful. I definitely don't accept that veganism is meaningless if subjectivism is true. So we can, yeah. we can certainly debate see, that. Sure. Could, I think that there could be issues with private language uh, and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Can you, could you uh, hear that? My stomach just fucking growled like crazy. Did that come through the mic? No, no. I, 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 honestly, <laughs> my, mine was, I'm starving, actually. Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm going to go and eat, actually. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, like, yeah, like, it's been a good conversation, actually. Uh, yeah, like, uh, I yeah. don't see... I think with the interpretation that you gave there, and I think a variation, I, I think a move between... I, I will say that... Um, I suppose that, like, I guess another thing that I would maybe recommend, you know that, you know that, um, I know you didn't make it. Do you know that sphere in which, um, uh, let's see, I'll just see if animation. I can find it. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's the trade swapping animation. Yeah, the trade swapping animation. Uh, I'll just double check if I'm about to say the right thing, because I don't want to. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we all know what's being talked about, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, you um, want to check for your own purposes? You want to just for me? Oh, just for me? Okay, okay, that I'm not about yeah. to make uh, like I'm not being an sorry, idiot. Sorry, yeah, I thought I thought you were trying to clarify to me what you're talking about. I'm like, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. Right. 
And and so on that animation, um, you know, the traits are being made so that at the end there is only You see, I guess the, the, the way I look at it the, when I'm looking at the animation is that You're assuming it seems both circles been, are in the same world. That yeah, that like I would say that like in non Euclidean <laughs> geometry, for example, they are the same sphere. Uh, I'll I'll they, try I'll try to Oh sorry, sorry, you go ahead. Yeah. Um or um there are two spheres and something hasn't been equalized do you see what i mean i think so, i think what you want to think of it more like is two pictures of the same house at the end right it's like you're just looking at two right. pictures of the same thing yeah. okay in which case the like i guess like obviously we would say that um like we we would say that like you know the, the it can't be two pictures of the same house though at the end because there like there couldn't be one object like I guess the issue is is that like if there was ever one if you would include something like history, this is the issue that I have that it could not have occurred is that like a Sorry. dog or yeah yeah it's, it's <laughs> Sorry. um if there was two pictures of um the same house, then we would say that um there was already always only one house. But if we were to say that there was a, a, a trade equalization process implies like a temporal aspect that something is becoming something no, else. No, it's, it's trade equalization isn't temporal. It's it's across worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that means that... The, but then when we talk about both objects, you it seems like you would talk about... You should be thinking of it like, like this. You should be thinking of it like you're looking at two possible worlds. Uh, and and with each change on that sphere, you're looking at a different possible world. And then finally, when they're the same, you're looking at two photos of the same world. Right. Okay. That I agree with, and I understand. Um. But then, in which case, there is only one object, and there's not there's not both objects. Do you see what I mean? There's two objects, as in there's an object in the first world, and there's an object in the last world. But if you're saying there's two objects in the last. But then you said that it has to drop off. But then you say that like something like, um, you know, then you said you you said that something like trans world identity would have to drop off. Clearly, do you see what I mean? Unless you like, isn't there a position there of like it's like modal collapse or some weird? I don't know about that. There's there's I think there's views where there's like not different possible worlds, but I I don't fucking know. Yeah, like, but forget. I guess forget I, I even mentioned that. I don't even know about that shit. But yeah. I was gonna say like, because I was actually gonna bring up Adams and his talk about uh, like the whether like um, I think he talks about um, how like like the necessity like how the, the like uh, necessity of identity and how uh, that it I doesn't think, follow that like if it's possible that it's necessary. Yeah, I think and, I think that there's there's an easy move to deal with any any kind of thing like that. Like if someone takes issue with the notion of possible worlds, you can just change to conceptualizable worlds or something. And that'll that'll just get out of the problem. But then no matter what we do though, if it's a part of the numerical identity for example, it almost it has to always for there to have been two objects for there to be able to say that there was one and two. There was must always be a differential basis. Um, if that drops off, then there could have only been one object. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not sure. I understand it's like for, that. for for one, like for example, for one, um, like for an apple to exist, um, in, in like for example, if 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 there was A and B, um, for there to have been, if <clears throat> A's identity is including the fact that it was once A or has ever been A then for it to become B, and B includes the notion of it having always been B, mm -hmm. then those two could not occur simultaneously. <laughs> yeah, you can't have something that, that was always B and was always not B. That's just obviously a contradiction. Yeah, uh, in which case, there could only be one, uh, there could only have ever been one. So when you, were, when you talk world. about both objects, for example, when you said like, both um, Lewis, both objects refers to in the last world and the first world. It doesn't say both objects in the last world. But it says after trait equalization, I guess I, I assumed that you were talking about the object, and, and maybe perhaps wrongly, um, when you talked about, like, um, you know, uh, what was it? That any trait remaining after equalization are possessed by both objects, you mean the first and the last. The fact that they are possessing both means that they've both been equalized. But if they've equalized everything, including 
uh, like you know, trans world identity, then they couldn't have been two objects in the first place. Do you see what I mean? So either that's not being equal, either that's not like. I don't think um, so. It just means two objects, like in world one and in the last world. That, that's all. It's not saying two objects in the last world. It's just object over here, object over here. Which and I thought we agreed that, on. I thought we had no problem with this. Um, yeah, and but like, I guess the point is, I'm saying is like with the animation, it's like if you look, it seems that like obviously the the first sphere is conforming to the same as the second sphere, right? Um, yeah. But if the, if the first sphere, you would say that it's differential to the point in w until the end in which it is the exactly the same sphere, and sure. in which case. It, at the end, you would agree that there was only one object, yeah? Yeah, I, I just picture okay. it like two pictures of one. I guess. Or something. I guess when I read, when I read, like, because you're saying at the end there is only one object. I guess when I read that at the end there's both objects, but you're actually referring to before the trade equalization happened, because I, I, I mean, I think, I think I, I'd have to read my exact phrasing, but it's just like, I mean, I, I all I can do is just describe what's being talked about. So it's mm -hmm. just, just picture each change on that first object. You're in a new possible world. Change, possible world, change, possible. And then finally, when you get to the last frame where they're the same, where they have all, they look the same, the spheres. Just picture being two shots of one world, like two pictures of one house. Yeah, and and in which case, like at the end, though, that like if they're the same object, they've not, it, there's not been an equalization that's actually happened. Because they've always been an object. Equalization just means across, like, it's, equalization is just the process of setting up that series of worlds, right? That's that's what equalization means. It's just setting up that series. Right, right. And and each individual world is being counted. So we're not saying that the object is retaining any form of identity as it's passing through. Not It doesn't retain identity in the strict yeah. logical sense. It's not It's not like it right. has all the same properties. They have different properties, like, like just trans world properties are an easy one, obviously. You have a different trans world property with each world. Um, so, so when we're talking about retention, it's kind of like in a loose sense. Like you're just talking about, it's, it's as if you're kind of tracking something because you're talking about the being that is virtually like the being in the last world, except there's some slight differences. We're, we're just yeah, tracking that was, thing. Yeah. That was what was confusing is because when you talked about retention, it seemed as if at the end it had retained something, but then you were saying that it was a shot of the same world. Do you see what I mean? Uh, not quite. But like so I, were, I get that there's some. Sorry. Yeah, just because it seemed because when you talked about retention and that it had retained, that's <clears> like retention is you know the ongoing process uh, of comparison, like that it is A B moving from A B C D, and that in each process it's retaining. But then at the end, if it's the same object, then there hasn't been anything to retain. Or, or change. There's not been a change in the first place yeah, because think, you said yourself, I think, I think it's the, the confusion, same object. The confusion seems to be that you think the word retention implies that like the same identity in the strict logical sense of having all the same properties is somehow maintained through different worlds, and that's just obviously a contradiction because the world is, for example, one of the properties, right? That's the transfer yeah. property. Yeah, and you, you, but we agreed that you would obviously. You, like, for example, if, um, like, so, for example, if someone said, like, I value being of world one, that, mm -hmm. like, then that they couldn't, that, that that's not something that is trade equalizable, then. Trade equalizable just means able to be part of the process. It is, it's not something that's retained. It's certainly something. Okay, that's yeah, no, sorry, that's what I mean. I mean, it, it's not something that could be retained. Sure. Yeah, I think, I think the okay. confusion has been mixing up trade equalization and retention. I think that's part like, of I think the, I think we're getting somewhere. Like I, I, I do think I that think we already got somewhere. We agreed that it's sound. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, think, just, I'm just I think the interpretation you, you gave me the interpretation fine. bit. Yeah. Uh, I think the interpretation you gave me is fine. Um, I think that the I still have a problem with um, the wording of that purple box because but of the whole problem, it's either, it's either problem, retention or both objects, and by, I don't think that they can be in the same. It's either retaining or it's not. By um, well, but that's in the strict logical sense of identity, as yeah, you said. Yeah, you're thinking, um, which yeah. depends upon the interpretation of the argument. Yeah. Um, and obviously, if you are saying that equalization does not include, um, as was said, notions of primitive identity or like you know, or notions of identity, then we don't. Does. It it does, but those things aren't retained. 
right? We don't we don't want to conflate equalization and yeah. retention. Those things are part of the trade equalization. They are processes or, or properties, sorry, that show up in some of the worlds, right? But they aren't mm -hmm. retained. Those things drop off, right? I, di I didn't hear what you listed, but I know you're just talking about things that are obviously not true in the last world and the first world. Like if you talk <laughs> about the trans world property, right? It's it's trade equalized. It's not retained though. Something like being an organism is retained. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not trade, right? But then what I'm saying is that the, I guess the point is is that like at the end you're saying after trade equalization there is actually a shot of one object. And then it says, because like obviously it's if it's if that's part of the process, then what we can say is that the notion of being in a different world is part of the object. In which case, sorry, at the end, me. we the only notion, have. Say, sorry, you lost me. You lost me. Say it again. The notion of what? Being part of a certain world is part of the trade equalization process. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in which case, if that's dropped off, mm -hmm. then at the end, we we'll end up with a shot of one object. Mm -hmm. And in which case, when we say <clears throat> are possessed by both objects, that implies a duality, like two ju two objects. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? No, not quite. The the both objects refers to like there's an object in the last world and there's one in the first. But, but if you say it's the first, then why does it say remaining after equalization or possessed by both objects? Remaining after equalization, we're just talking about something that doesn't drop off. So like being an organism or being on planet Earth or something like that. So you would say this for example. I'll just double check, right? So if it's if you equalize me to you, being interested in philosophy is retained. Yeah, but That's like all. obviously having the identity of like being Isaac is not retained. Correct. But then that, that this is my point. Like notions of identity have to be remain separate. So like. Okay. Okay, I get you. But you, also, you would never claim that was the case anyway. So that's fine. That's fine. Okay. It's cool. <laughs> I get you. It's I get all it. good. And and I wanted to unless you unless you had something else there. No, that's cool. Um, I wanted to also say, part of what sparked this conversation was you mentioned that you uh you actually got someone in a contradiction with the name of the trade. And I responded kind of cheekily by saying yeah, it's kind of nice when you get someone to contradict themselves with the argument. Eh? Um, but yeah, you had uh you'd gotten uh, that sophist Navabi. To uh, contradict himself, which I did also, but I got so fucking infuriated with that guy, I didn't even. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna call him a sophist because like, he was pretty good faith with me, nice. pretty decent yeah. with me, and he, and he, and the fact that he, he admitted he was in contradiction. Well, that's um, nice. Uh, it was like I think shows how good faith he was, and I think, um, I think as well he, um, like, um, and as well he, he did say, um, was it? I didn't use name the trait in its formal version. I, I kind of um, he basically asked me almost because he, he was because he was saying that he, he had had been in name the trait with you. Like he kind of went through this and he's like, other vegans say, uh, you know, what is ask me to name the trait? And he says, well, the trait is self awareness. And so <laughs> when I got a, like, and and, yeah. and so I just run him through the 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 what would happen like uh, as to whether he would. Yeah. Whether he, whether self awareness could possibly be the trait if he values, um, if he values, um, I was asked him why he valued self awareness, and then he said because of suffering, and then I showed him that suffering, um, could be greater in a being that was non self aware. Yeah, that that's uh, a slightly uh, different pathway than I would take. Like, my, I, that makes sense. That's fine, but. So there's a, there's a slight difference of approach there, because what I would do is I would just point to a being that's not self-aware that he cares about, like some, you know, a human who's disabled. And if you say they are self-aware, then we would just say self-aware to the degree of an animal. But anyway, I would just point to a contradicting example. But you can also do what you did, which is ask what the basis is for caring about self-awareness. Mm -hmm. The reason I don't always do that, that is because sometimes there isn't a further basis. That is just the thing. But yeah, if they provide some further basis, and then that further basis applies to some being they're saying they don't value. Well, they, of course, then you get a problem. Yeah, that, that's yeah, exactly. Because he did end up saying that he that the only thing that he ended up valuing was suffering. Um, because I said that I said to him, I was like, "Well, why do you value self awareness?" Um, and then he said, uh, "I value self awareness because self awareness shows that um, not a being has a greater has a has a." You know, um, a, a greater value for for themselves and the uh, and so on like that. And I basically ran them through that. You know, the the that in reality that 
if he's being a utilitarian and he's and he's evaluating suffering, that 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 both actual that both actually variations of psychological complexity, but that the the aspects of suffering are independent to the circumstances of the being, which can be modified by self awareness, but that the self awareness itself um, doesn't necessarily being a, make a being suffer more. Yeah, and and yeah. and then and then when you come to that point, he was like. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, if, you, um, if, if self-awareness is a sufficient condition for moral value, then you, yeah. you can't, uh, or sorry, if, if, if being able to suffer is, then unless you take the view that, like, be, it's impossible to be non-self-aware and suffer or something, you're just going to get some weird contradiction where it's like, okay, you can have things that are self-aware and that aren't self-aware and they can both suffer, so how could you value one and not the other if ability to suffer is a sufficient condition for moral value? Yeah, I, I appreciate yeah. that move. I, I think that's nice, and, well, and well handled. I think, the point, I think the point that he was, the problem that he was making is that he thought that beings that were self-aware would suffer to a greater degree because they're self-aware. When I pointed out that, like, if we take something like Stoic philosophy or, you know, those monks that set them on fire, set themselves on fire, that um, that the ability to be self-aware can give someone the conceptual the, the conceptual ability to distance themselves from the moment, which yeah, is like, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're adding the point that someone can suffer more if they're not self-aware. Or yeah. That, that, and, that might um, be possible or something. And, uh, and he agreed. And so, like, yeah, they could ended up showing that he was wrong. Yeah, I don't know if someone necessarily suffers more in virtue of not being self-aware, but I'm sure you can have a being that's not self-aware that can suffer more in some given situation than a being that is. But, but yeah, like, whatever. Let's not get way into that. I, I agree with yeah. the general thing you're doing there. Yeah. And th there's one other thing I wanted to say. Um, fuck, what was it? Uh, damn, I don't, I don't remember. Um, okay, well, whatever. I had, I had a good chat, though. I, I actually really appreciate this. I, I had a fun time having this conversation. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we may as well end it now. Because we don't yeah. want to crack open a f fucking huge topic with, like, 30 minutes left, presumably. No, no, no. Why don't we, um, obviously, we'll schedule that debate on uh, maybe either modern day debates or like this, whatever. Um, I like the idea of doing on modern day debates because I quite like the platform. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm down. But um, on on maybe uh, like you know as I said, uh, subjectivism and the meaning of veganism. Yeah, yeah. Whether subject whether on subjectivism, veganism is meaningless. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well. Uh, yeah. Here I'm gonna just end this recording. Um, any any final words before I hit the stop button? No. Just um, thank you very much. I think you've been really sincere. Um, oh, I think. I you. think that we've had a varying interpretation of the. Of the argument and uh i think i've hopefully i've expressed my points clearly enough and the audience can tell us whether you know that, that they um they they understood what i'm getting at but i'm i'm glad that we've had this conversation i think we've made some real ground and bridged our positions i agree all right i'm gonna end the recording uh, have a good day guys